Okay, so let's jump over to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I'm going to open up our image of the blocks. Um, it's already been converted to a grayscale image. But now we're going to look at creating some of our own custom convolution filters. So to do that, we go to Filter, Other, Custom. And when we do that, it brings up a convolution kernel dialog box uh, where you see a bunch of in empty cells, which basically represent the matrix where the center pixel is our anchor. The center box is our anchor. Um, <clears throat> and so we can begin to provide different types of weighting um, numeric values for each of the adjacent pixels around that anchor to affect the image in some way. By default, if it's set to 1, that means the center pixel hasn't changed any, and if we don't change any of the other ones, um, nothing has really been affected in the image because the center pixel remains the same. It has the same pixel value. Um, but if we want to start looking at those derivatives, let's say we wanted to get the um, vertical edges in an image, what we can do is actually begin to weight the adjacent pixels um, in, the, in the DX to get our vertical edges. So what I've done here is I've the pixel on the right I've assigned a weight of positive one and the pixel on the left I've assigned a weight of negative one. These two, remember these two get added together and reassigned to our anchor pixel. So what this is doing, since this is a negative one, is basically saying take the right pixel and subtract the pixel on the left and reassign that to the center pixel. Um, so what we're doing is looking at very small local differences in the image, but when something big, a big change occurs, that, that gets recognized as a edge. Um, in this case, it's a vertical edges. We can do the same technique if we wanted to look at the horizontal edges by subtracting the bottom pixel from the top pixel. Here we've assigned a positive one value to the top pixel and a negative one to the bottom pixel and we can see that it returns the horizontal edges in an image. We can combine these by adding or subtracting both the top and bottom and left and right pixels to get both the vertical and horizontal edges in the image. So you can do a lot of different patterns here in this matrices to affect the image in quite dramatic ways. For example, we can look at an embossing filter. If we look at uh, sort of weighting the upper corners uh, as in a positive way versus subtracting the uh, lower right-hand corners of the anchor pixel, um, what we can do is create an embossing filter, but it doesn't quite look like an embossing filter. And the reason why is we have to actually bias the color values of all the pixels by some amount. Um, in this case, I'm going to actually bias it by halfway in between 0 and 255, so 128, which gives us a sort of neutral gray color. But then that allows us to actually see some of the areas which become darker and some of the areas that become whiter. So in this case, the areas that um, are weighted that actually begin to indicate shadow areas um, get darker, as whereas the highlight areas get brighter. Um, and we can do this based on this simple matrices of values and by offsetting or biasing the center pixel by some, some weighted value. Um, there are lots of different patterns you can try. We can try uh, blurring filters or sharpening filters. Um, so I would encourage you to play around with uh, different types of filters. Uh, for example, and there's lots of information that can be found online, if we subtract all of the adjacent pixels and give a... Uh, amplify the center pixel by a weight of 5, we can actually begin to see what happens is we get a sharpening filter occurring where the edges get more crisp um, or sharper. Uh, so you can begin to actually sharpen an image uh, or even blurring an image by reducing noise by changing the way these matrices values occur. Okay, so I'm now going to switch over to Grasshopper and show how the, some of those same techniques can be done using Grasshopper and Firefly. So I'm going to open up the Grasshopper editor and this tutorial assumes that you've already installed Firefly. Um, if you haven't, you can download the installer at fireflyexperiments.com. Um, there's an installer which will walk you through installing it and so that when it has been installed you should see a new set of tabs, a tab up here that says Firefly and a set of subcategories, some dealing with the Arduino, some audio tools, um, as well as a whole suite of computer vision tools, which is what we'll be looking at right now. 
So the first thing we're going to do is actually under computer vision, we're going to load a bitmap so that we can actually begin to modify it. And if we scroll in and hover over it, we see that there's a warning which says that the file path failed to collect data. All that means is that it doesn't know what image you want to load. So I'm going to go to params, primitive, file path, and I'm going to locate, I'm going to say set one file path, and I'm going to locate an image on our directory, that same image, that blocks file. Um, so if I make that connection, here is that image, and you can see it's skewed a little bit, so I'm going to center it so that it's more square. Um, here is our image that we were just working with, our black and white image. Um, is showing up. And what's being passed out is a new data type called a Firefly bitmap. And this Firefly bitmap can then be processed through any number of filters, passed through any number of filters, and then re-imaged using what's called the bitmap painter. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, let's go to Firefly Vision and load up a convolution filter. So there's a component that says convolution filter. And one thing you'll notice about those icons is that all of the filters have a circular border around them. So any of the components that have a circular border uh, icon actually indicate that that's a type of uh, filter that can be used on a Firefly bitmap. So here, the top, again, we're getting a warn error, which means that a number of parameters um, have failed to collect data. In this case, it's saying it doesn't know what image you want to actually work on. So the very top input is going to be the image. And you can see that the matrices that's been defined is similar to the one in Photoshop where the center pixel has a weight of one. So if we were to look at, if we were to drop a bitmap painter component, so what we're doing is passing a, a bitmap through a filter and then we're going to re-image it. We're going to paint it onto the canvas uh, using the bitmap painter. So here if we look at the output, because the center pixel is, is one, nothing has really been changed, nothing has been modified in the image. But now the second set uh, input is actually a 3x3 three three convolution matrix, which is just a list of numbers, of nine numbers, which we can pass in using a, let's say, a post-it panel or a text panel. So I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to type in a series of numbers. Let's look at the uh, edge detection example first. Um, let's go 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0, 0, 0. Um, and by default, this doesn't, it doesn't recognize it as a list, you can see. Uh, but if we right-click and say multi-line data, it now understands that those nine values should be treated as a list and not just a string of text. Um, and so if I were to pass that value into our second input parameter, now you can see what we've done is we've actually changed our matrices. Um, it's now using these nine numbers, and it's reading from left to right from the top row. So 0, 0, 0 along the top row, then negative 1, 0, positive 1, then 0, 0, 0. That's how the matrices, or the convolution filter component reads that. So here you can see when we do that, we actually get the horizontal edges in the image. We can change that by scrolling, double-clicking, and let's look at the vertical edges. So if we take those back to 0, and let's make the top pixel and the bottom pixel uh, have a different weighted value. Um, now you can see we actually get the vertical edges. The vertical edges turn more white. And we can combine those two just like we did before by just changing these numbers. Now we can also look at that same embossing filter. So let's try that. Um, we're going to do that same pattern of weighting the top pixels as a positive one and the bottom pixels, the bottom corner pixels, as negative one. When we do that, you see we have positive one and negative one in these values, but we also have this scale factor as and the uh, bias, the offset bias that can be done here, and those are controlled actually through these other two inputs. This input is actually controlling the scale um, the, of the overall pixel, and then the offset, the bias. So here I can connect a slider to here, and this is going to be some number between 0 and uh, 255. So I'm going to create a maximum value, and now I can take that into the offset bias, and here I can interactively change the offset bias to some value where you can see that we're skewing the image in some way. Uh, the offset bias is getting more neutral gray. 
So here we've created that same convolution uh, filter uh, that we were just working with in Photoshop, um, but now we're doing it in Grasshopper and Firefly. And if you'd like, you can actually begin to save these images out using Firefly. Um, there is a snapshot component. Um, it is under snap snapshot here. You can actually pass an image in as well as a file path uh, and a name um, and then hit this button right here if you give it a file name and a file path uh, as a string location on your directory it will begin to save images in that directory so you can save JPEGs, PNG files, uh, bitmaps, any data type that you want as an image file type you can begin to save onto your directory so you can save these snapshots uh, at different stages using these snapshot uh, tool.